In this movie, I'm going to give you a demo of a few quick tips you can do to help you when you're compositing. I'm using this compositing tips project you'll find in the chapter 15 folder. And basically, we have this subway composition that we've been working on. And I've also imported the original project we looked at in the first movie in this chapter, where I'd spent a little bit more time putting this thing together. Now, while the composition you're seeing on your screen right now is definitely not perfect, it is a lot better than this. And you know, folks, honestly, this is where the rubber meets the road when you're talking about After Effects because it's all about your eyes. It's what you perceive. When you look at this and you look at this, can you tell the difference? Do you know where the problems lie when you look at this? One of the first things that I see is this connection where my back touches the back of the subway. There's a shadow coming out from behind my back, which is going to really help in the compositing because that's what really would happen. But the back of the seat, there's no shadow at all. There's no connection uh, to my body, and there would be a shadow there. So what we can do is select this layer and then add the drop shadow effect. And, of course, we could adjust the distance, which basically makes the shadow farther away from my body. And we could also increase the softness, which is basically the blur on the edge of the shadow. And already, just that one simple act makes such a big difference. Is it perfect? No, but it's definitely better. If we want to add a bigger shadow, we could increase distance. And again, softness to increase the blur. We can increase opacity to make a less transparent shadow. Whatever we felt worked. Again, there's no hard rules here. You're going to have to use your eyes to determine what's the best setting. Now, one of the biggest problems that face those that do compositing is color. And this is a great example of this. I shot this footage outside of the window of my car when I was driving past the Oregon coast. And this render was done by a guy in Denver, Kimball Bywater from SpillDinkAnimation.com. And he didn't know what was going on. I didn't tell him what, what project I was using this for. And uh, we just shot this green screen footage uh, in a green screen studio without any regard for color correction whatsoever. So basically these elements have no business color-wise being together. One quick and dirty way to make them look as if they belong together is by adding something called an adjustment layer. I'm going to right click in the timeline panel. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Basically what this is is a dummy blank layer. So all the effects that you apply to an adjustment layer affect all the layers beneath it, which is super handy for making things blend together or composite better. So I'm going to do a search for the color balance effect. Again, this is probably not the best way to do it, but this is definitely a good way to do it and a good way to do it fast. So apply color balance to the adjustment layer, and then I can play around with these color controls. In the final comp, I created this dark kind of blue greenish tint, uh, which is pretty popular in movies nowadays. Uh, let's say we want to do something different over here in the subway composition. Let's say we wanted to make it warm. I'm going to select Preserve Luminosity, and then I'm going to add some red, and then I could take away green and blue. Taking away green will add magenta. Taking away blue, subtracting blue, will add yellow. So basically, we just adjust these parameters through shadows, midtones, and highlights until we get the result that we're looking for. I'm looking for something a little bit more warm. I'm actually missing yellow here. I need, I need more yellow, so I'm going to take away some, some blue. And that's good. Maybe restore a little bit of red here. Now, I like where this is going, but the thing is it's a little bit too overdone. It's a good direction. It's just too much. Well, what I can do is come down to the adjustment layer, hit the letter T, and take down the opacity for the adjustment layer. So essentially, we're reducing the opacity of the adjustment. Now, as I take off the visibility of color balance or of the adjustment layer, either one, you can see the before and the after. So you can see that the color balance effect on an adjustment layer, basically adjusting all layers at once, really helped to make this project more cohesive. Now finally, one other big thing here. I'm going to go to the moving scenery layer. Uh, this layer is just a little bit weird. It's uh, low quality footage, and uh, again, it was shot out the side of a car while it was driving past it. So uh, it's a little bit too sharp for a subway scene. It doesn't look like it's going fast enough. So I'm going to apply a fast blur effect to the moving scenery layer, just increase the blurriness a little bit. Now, one of the things we could also do is select the effect and actually duplicate the effect by using the keyboard shortcut Command D or Control D on the PC. And then I'm going to change the blur dimension on the duplicate to horizontal. This will make it so that as you increase blurriness, it only blurs it horizontally. This can create the illusion that we're actually going faster than we are. So if I took this down, this is probably a little bit too much, but if I took it up to somewhere around 60 or so, 
now it appears that we're actually going really fast and there's blur. So even if I stopped on one of these frames, it appears that we're going past some scenery really quickly. So as you can see, in a pretty short span of time, we have definitely improved the overall look of our project. What I can do is click toggle switches and modes and let me close up this adjustment layer here. And you can see all these effect switches. Well, these effect switches here in the timeline panel are like master controls. So if I click the effects icon here in the timeline panel, it's going to turn off the visibility of all effects applied to this layer. So we can just quickly see the result of the project before these effects and after these effects. Now, while this could use some more tweaking, there's no comparison of how much better it looks than the original footage. And with that, we come to the close of this compositing chapter. And hopefully, the tips and techniques we've covered in this chapter will help you with your own projects.